As the head of the Shaw household, Joshua had never eaten breakfast favorites of the street hotels. And so, I replied with a question. Have you seen your kitchen? It's cleaner than your face. It has nothing. Even if I'm the chef of a five-star hotel, I can't pull a feast without tools and ingredients. Are you going to eat my breakfast? Joshua was rendered speechless. He was starving but tried to play it cool. He took a seat at the table and faintly said, It would be a waste not to eat since you already bought it. I guess having it once or twice won't hurt. That was a way to save himself from embarrassment. I splitted half of each dish to him. Taking my seat, I ate my share and remarked, I looked around when I moved in yesterday and noticed you don't have utensils, I ordered quite a bit of kitchen utensils online. I will get groceries and cook when things arrive. So you don't eat street food again. Joshua held a high position in a major corporation, so I guessed white collars were particular about their food. I had the habit of cooking at home and only ordered takeout when I was at my workplace. I was willing to accommodate his fussiness for food. I decided to extend our conversation further. Our home is missing a lot of stuff. Can I decorate the place to my liking? Joshua picked his head up to glance at me sitting opposite him, before digging into his breakfast. The common breakfast tasted alright. He then responded. We are husband and wife with a marriage certificate. This is your home. You can decorate it as you like on one condition that you don't touch my room. Okay. I was happy that now I'm free to turn the other rooms upside down, having obtained his permission. I made up my mind to go as planned with flowers and a swing on the balcony. There I could read a book and admire the flowers while sitting on my swing during my spare time. I reminded Joshua that Aunt Dolly who is now my mother-in-law, told us yesterday to go to the estate on the weekend for dinner and to meet the family. Joshua faintly responded. I will let you know. I need to check my schedule if I can't make the time. I will get my PA to bring my parent over so you guys can meet and have a meal together. I had no objection. Now that his belly was full, Joshua took out his wallet and looked through it, but he did not have much cash on him. In the end, he pulled out a debit card and put it in front of me. With a raised brow, I looked at him. He also looked at me and said, You need money to buy things, this card is for you, and the pin is. Joshua looked for a pen and a piece of paper and wrote the pin down before handing it to me. Then he said, you can use the card for household expenses, I will transfer the money into the account every month when my wages are in. But you need to keep track of whatever you buy. I don't mind you spending the money, but I need to know what it's spent on. Back when we got the marriage certificate, I had asked him whether we would go halve on the expenses, and Joshua shot it down. Since we were a married couple, we were family. So he did not mind giving me money. Joshua had more money that he couldn't count and could not put a figure into his assets. He barely had time to spend the money as he was often busy at work. At least me being his wife, could now help him use some of it. Nevertheless, it did not mean that Joshua would allow to be taken advantage of. He had to watch out because, to him, I was a scheming girl. He had no problem with me squandering his money on our home expenses. But the way he had put it, I could not stand his attitude and conduct. I slid the debit card alongside the paper with the pin back to Joshua. I did not even spare a glance at the pin. Then told him, Mr. Shaw, you are not the only one in the house. I am living here too, you bought the house, so, I save on rent by living here, I can't let you pay for the house expenditure too. I will pay for whatever is needed in the house. I will let you know if the cost of the household exceeds 200,000, so you can chip in with whatever amount you feel fit. My income was enough to cover the daily household expenses. So, there was no need for him to pay unless it was a huge purchase. It was not that I could not accept his money, but his attitude rubbed me the wrong way. He made it seem like I was after his money and even told me to keep track of the purchase. Joshua was not an idiot, on the contrary, he was very smart for my refusal. Joshua caught on that his attitude hurt my pride. He fell silent for a moment before pushing the debit card and the written pin on a paper toward me. Softening his tone, he said, I know you have an income, but how much do you earn? You have said it yourself that this is our home. You are part of it and so am I. How can I let you shoulder all the household expenses? Take it. Don't keep a record of your purchase if you don't want to. Have you given a thought about getting a car? Do you need my help? 
The house is not very far from my workplace, so I will be requesting taxi services. Joshua was lost for words and then remembered that his mother said, I live together with my sister, and the people who mattered most in my life were my sister and nephews. The Joshua responded, It would make your life easier with a car. You can drive on the weekends and take your sister and nephews for a short trip. Maybe later, we just got married and we don't know each other well. I don't feel comfortable using your money to buy a car. I have enough savings to get a car but a house is a better investment. I can have a home with a house. I'm not like you men. Men prefer getting cars. Oh yes, my sister wants to meet you, but I told her that you are away on business. I will take you to see her at a later date. Sure. After the chat, I went to arrange my clothes in the closet while Joshua sat in the living room. He wanted to read the paper, but he did not have a subscription delivered to this place. Since he could not find the newspaper, he turned to check the news on his phone to kill time. Having done with the arrangement, I threw a question to the man on his phone. Have you done your laundry? I got it covered. He replied, his clothes were normally sent to the dry cleaner. I went about my business, swept, mopped, and tidied up the place. Joshua watched as I shuttled back and forth in the house doing a maid's job. Raising his brows, he was tempted to say something but held his tongue after much thought. It was a good thing that his PA arranged for the cleaners to clean before we moved in. The house was spotless. I swept around without finding a speck of dust. Now that I was done with the daily tasks, I returned to my room and cleaned myself up. With a handbag in my hand, I walked out of the room and told the man on the sofa, Mr. Shaw, I'm going to my sister's place and then to my friend's bookshop. As I'm still on a leave of three days, around what time will you be home? You can leave me a message. So I will leave the door unlocked. Joshua repeated an earlier reply. I will come back every night unless I'm away on business. I will let you know beforehand if I need to go away. He went ahead and said, Esther, take the card. Holding the bank card, Joshua got up and approached me and handed the debit card to me and apologized. I should have watched my tone just now. I apologize. I'm sorry. I studied his face for a while, and finally, I accepted the card as he appeared genuine this time. I stuffed the card alongside the papers with the pin into my pocket and told him. I should get going. Sure, he replied. Joshua stood there as he watched me leave. Once the door was shut, he let out a sigh of relief. He did not seem to do a good job assuming the role of a husband. Returning to his seat on the sofa, Joshua grabbed his phone and called the caretaker of the family home. With him picking up, Joshua uttered in a low voice, Sam, when the old missus is up, tell her to gather the family to have dinner at Woodley. The old missus will know what it's about. 